When actress Jean Seberg started up an affair with Clint Eastwood on the set of the 1969 film Paint Your Wagon, she thought the romance would last forever. This came in spite of the fact that the actress was currently married to her second husband and Clint had recently had his first child with his first wife. When filming of the picture ended, Jean was devastated when Clint acted as if he barely knew her from that point forward. Meanwhile, other events in the actress's life seemed to be conspiring against her, as she found herself the unwitting victim of the COINTELPRO. A decade after Paint Your Wagon's release, Jean was found dead from an apparent suicide. But many continue to speculate that foul play may have been involved. Join Facts First as we explore how an affair with Clint Eastwood left Jean Seberg utterly traumatized. Paint Your Wagon was a strange musical western that came early on in Clint Eastwood's career and cast the actor alongside actress Jean Seberg. The film has gone on to achieve cult status, but it wasn't incredibly noteworthy upon its 1969 release. During production, stars Clint and Jean reportedly started up an on-set romance, but both stars were married at the time, and Jean wasn't even the only person on the set that Clint was cheating with. Clint was also supposedly having an affair with one of the film's extras, with him having gotten her the position so they could continue their already established romance during filming. At this point in Eastwood's career, he was known as one of the most notorious womanizers around. Although he'd been married to his first wife for over a decade, he'd become known for his numerous extramarital affairs. Clint was particularly notorious for being romantically involved with his co-stars on the set of his films. But these flings rarely lasted beyond the time of production. Apparently, Jean Seberg wasn't aware of this habit. When Clint romanced her on the set of Paint Your Wagon, she thought their romance would last forever. Jean took the romance so seriously, she filed for divorce from her then-husband. When filming ended, Jean was taken aback when Clint subsequently began acting like he didn't even know her. In later interviews, Clint expressed that the two stars had simply grown distant naturally. But Jean's side of the story always seemed to indicate that she wanted their relationship to continue past production. The affair between Clint and Jean was only one of many elements that came together to make the production of Paint Your Wagon singularly chaotic. The film's premise had been balked at from the get-go, with Clint Eastwood and co-star Lee Marvin having been cast in a musical, despite the fact that neither knew how to sing. Meanwhile, vagrants crashed the film's set and ended up having to be integrated into the film's production as extras. When shooting was finished, director Joshua Logan famously burned the set down. Jean Seberg had risen to some prominence before taking her role in Paint Your Wagon, but both her career and her personal life took a downward trajectory after its production. The film wasn't positively received. Although its negative reception didn't have much of an effect on Clint Eastwood's career, Jean's star power hadn't yet solidified to the point where her own career was able to take the blow. Meanwhile, the dissolution of her second marriage and extramarital relationship with Clint Eastwood had dealt a similar blow to the actress's sanity. Though Clint Eastwood is still alive and working today at age 91, the same sadly can't be said for actress Jean Seberg. A decade after Paint Your Wagon's release, the actress was found deceased from suicide. Her days during that decade hadn't been very pleasant, though her traumatic affair with Clint Eastwood had not been the only contributing factor to her misery. Jean had also found herself the unwitting victim of the COINTELPRO. Short for Counterintelligence Program, the COINTELPRO referred to a series of operations conducted by the FBI during the 60s and 70s counterculture movements. As an outspoken civil rights advocate, Jean was deemed a threat by the FBI. Of course, this fact continues to make the actress's already mysterious suicide all the more suspicious. Hey, if you're enjoying this video so far, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. And stick around for more about Jean Seberg. Before starring alongside Clint Eastwood in Paint Your Wagon, Jean Seberg had appeared in the debut of French New Wave filmmaker Jean-Luc Godard. That film was 1960s Breathless, and Jean's appearance in the feature quickly made her an icon. Francois Moriel was the name of Jean's first husband, and they were married from 1958 to 1960. In 1962, she married a man named Roman Gray, and it was from him that she filed for divorce after striking up her affair with Clint Eastwood years later. Her second marriage, as well as the dissolution of her first, had been the result of the actress's infidelity. She had begun having an affair with the man who became her second husband while being married to her first, and she had similar aspirations when developing a relationship with Clint Eastwood. But Clint had other plans. Though Jean divorced from second husband Roman, Clint wasn't there to take his place. Jean subsequently married a filmmaker named Dennis Berry in 1972. Though they ended up separating in 76, they never officially divorced before Jean's supposed suicide. 
Jean had two children with her second husband, one of whom died prematurely. Jean's suicide note was allegedly addressed to her surviving son. While Jean had been married to second husband Roman Gary for several decades before starting her extramarital affair with Clint, Clint had been married to first wife Maggie Johnson for over a decade. Clint and Maggie married in 1953 and technically remained married until 1984, but Clint and his first wife separated during the 70s, and Clint started a live-in relationship with actress Sandra Locke that lasted past the point of his and his first wife's official divorce. Clint didn't remarry until 1996 and was married to Dina Eastwood until 2014. Years after the filming of Paint Your Wagon, it was revealed that Jean Seberg wasn't the only actress that Clint was having relations with on the set. Before production of the film had begun, Clint had apparently started up an affair with a fledgling actress and had secured her a role as an extra on the feature so he could keep her on hand as his extra on-set lover. The actress later came out with her story, claiming Jean Seberg had been completely unaware of her existence. Jean's drama with Clint certainly contributed to the actress's distressed state during her final years, but it was later revealed that the actress was also being targeted by the FBI. The FBI targeted Jean Seberg under the direction of J. Edgar Hoover, and the targeting can certainly be said to have contributed to her downfall. But there's also the fact that the actress's later suicide was relatively suspicious and may have involved some foul play. Shortly after the actress's funeral service, the FBI finally came out and announced it had been targeting the actress over the preceding decade. This targeting was done with the intent to decrease Jean's credibility with the public. The most notable result of the FBI's targeting of Jean Seberg was a story planted in 1970 suggesting the actress's current pregnancy was the result of an extramarital affair with a known member of the Black Panthers. Though Jean didn't realize the rumors had been planted by the FBI, she blamed the subsequent harassment from this story for that child's premature birth and death shortly after. Besides the false story suggesting Jean Seberg had been having an extramarital affair with a Black Panther, other consequences of the actress being targeted by the COINTELPRO included various forms of surveillance that she was unknowingly subjected to during her final years. Many have also speculated that the FBI played a role in Jean having a hard time finding work after filming Paint Your Wagon. During the final year of her life, she struck up a relationship with a man named Ahmed Hosni that proved disastrous. The man allegedly convinced the actress to sign him over all of her money. Shortly after this, she went into hiding from him, claiming she was afraid of him. Not long after, she was found dead. Jean was found deceased in her car in September of 1979 with a suicide note and a bottle of barbiturates. However, the overwhelming presence of alcohol found in her system, despite the lack of any bottles in the car, made authorities scratch their heads. To this day, they still don't know how she could have wound up like that unless someone else had been present during her death. Now it's time to hear from you. Do you think the FBI was involved in Jean's apparent suicide? Let us know in the comments section below. And before you go, make sure you give this video a like and subscribe to Facts First if you haven't already. Click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.